Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Phantom the Game. This is by Cryptozoic Entertainment. It's for 2 to 20 players, ages 8 and up. It takes about 10 to 20 minutes to play the game. In Pantone the Game, you're going to be playing a game of somewhat Pictionary, where you'll be using swatches of different colors to try and uh, make cre uh, characters from different uh, movies and books and whatnot, and have uh, your opponents guess it. Why would they want to guess it? Well, because they'll score points as well as you. If nobody gets to the first round, you'll give them a hint. If nobody gets to the second round, you'll give them another hint. Until the fourth round, nobody guesses it by that time, nobody gets any points. It's going to be three rounds. The first round involved is going to be basically players uh, using all the swatches they possibly can, all the different colors or pixel colors. And then the, after that, the next round after that is going to be they can use, I think it's one of every single color, and finally it's going to be just three of any color. And it's going to get crazy, it's going to get hectic. The game is beautiful. Let's go ahead and let me show you what it looks like down below, Pantone, and how to play it. So here we have Pantone the game, and every Everything that's going to be included. This is the box for the game, and it opens in a unique way. It pulls out just like this to the point where you're going to get your rule book and explaining how to play the game, as well as advanced game modes and everything included. So if I move this thing off to the side, you'll see a beautiful set of different colors. Of course, the colors are you can just simply pop them out if you want. It has a little like little folding tray thing here, and uh, you have two different sides to these things, right? The Pantone side and the blank side. Uh, you're going to get a bunch of cards here as well. These cards are going to have different characters, like Frank. Frankenstein's Monster, Winnie the Pooh, and Peter Pan, and four of each of these colors. The game's pretty simple. You're going to take this to the side here. Every player is going to get four of these cards here, face down, and then they're going to oops, select uh, one of them to be removed. The game is played in three rounds, so you're going to look at these guys and figure out which one's going to be the hardest for people to figure out. Maybe I would get rid of Papa Smurf. Who knows which one I would, and I would keep the rest. The first round's pretty simple. Everybody's going to have three cards, and the player that you choose to go first is going to start off by making... Uh, uh, their first chosen card out of these little swatches here. Uh, their card would be Big Bird. Nobody else is going to know that. So they're going to try and deduce how they want to make it. So they maybe would probably take yellow. Maybe they would take some red. And then they're going to try and create uh, an image of Big Bird with what colors they have. Maybe uh, some, some yellow feet or something like that. Let's see if I can do it. Maybe something like this uh, bird. And then he's got his two wings, something like that. Uh, maybe a head. Um... <laughs> so, something, right? And then after they've gone ahead and made it, they can use any of the colors they want for the first round. Everybody's going to get a chance to guess. So the first person they might guess, oh, I don't know, yellow man, and that they'd be wrong, or a duck, or a chicken. If nobody guesses after the first round, then the next round, uh, you're going to give a hint. This one would be television. So people know it's a character and it's from television. They would go around and guess again. If nobody got it once again, the next hint would be that it's tall. And if nobody got it, the nest would be the next one. And finally, the last clue would be a muppet. If <laughs> Still nobody got it, then no one gets points. However, if somebody guesses it, they're going to score based on that round. The first round is five, and the last round is one point. So two people are always going to get points each round. After that occurs, you're going to go ahead and take these guys back and put them in the box, and the next player is going to get to go for that first round. After everybody has gone, you're then going to make sure you these cards are done. You're going to go take the next card, and you get to choose what you want for the next round. Maybe I would go with, oh, this one right here, Oscar the Grouch. In this round, it's going to function the same way, except for the fact that you can only use one of each color. So Oscar the Grouch, you probably want to use a green and a lighter green, uh, maybe even a yellow, I suppose, and then maybe a black for the, for the, for the trash can or something. And uh, you're, you're going to make your, make your image. After you've gone ahead and done that, then players are going to have to try and guess what that is. It'll function the exact same way until the final round of the game. Now, the final round of the game is actually the most interesting, in my opinion, because you're simply going to get to use three of any that you would like. So for Pikachu, maybe I would actually just use all three yellow and then maybe try and create a... Uh, uh, Pikachu. I don't know how you would go ahead and do that, but something something like that, I suppose. And players are going to once again try and guess. At the end of the game, you're going to add up all of the points that everybody has accrued throughout it, and the winner of the game is going to be the person with the most points. The game plays very similar to Pictionary in that sense, but you're using these swatches and these clues and hints, and you're working together with your opponents, not really on teams. However, it can play up to 20 players, so in that case, you're actually going to be able to play uh, a team variant of the game if you would like. It gives examples of the rules followed based on that. After that, you're simply going to be done. You can go ahead and play again or not. Put the cards up. It's very, very simple to put it back in the game. And uh, you're done. That's the basic idea of Pantone. All right, let's come up and talk about the game.
So what do I think about Pantone the game? I mean, realistically, this game is a very similar rendition of Pictionary, but now you're using swatches, those things you would find at Home Depot or the uh, improvement stores with paint, and you're gonna be using those to create images. The images are all gonna be characters, and you don't actually need, surprisingly, a lot of these things to make characters. You know, you would actually, at uh, Batman, you would be surprised how very few of these colors you would need for somebody to guess that. And then, of course, there's some more interesting and surprising characters that can change the way the game works. One, for instance, as an example which made this really like mind-boggling is the first round my friend did Thanos and he used five different colors for the infinity stones and he had a purple thing holding it and then he had five colors of black five colors of white and the, the black ones were down the white ones were up so basically Thanos destroying half and you go oh that's Thanos based on that you can also if you want move the character move the uh, things around as you're making it to kind of give a little illustration uh, which gives it more of a uh, an active feel in the game, or if you want, you can be as simple like I am and you just try and draw the thing, you know, make the thing the best as you possibly can and have people try and guess it. But there's a lot involved in the game that you would surprisingly not assume to be there. And not only that, but you can create it how you want. You can make the, you can change the rules to make it fit your group. If you want to add more action involved, you can. If you want to add a timer, you can do that as well. But overall, the game is exciting. The game is fun and very, very enjoyable. I highly suggest you check out the game Pantone. It is awesome. The only thing I can say negative about it is there's only so many cards in the game and once you played it a certain amount of times you're going to have an edge of the competition because you're going to know what the cards are and what they're likely going to make if i see thanos again and my friend is playing with me again he'll probably do the same thing and i'm likely to get it and that will give me points so adding more cards would be great uh, whether it comes with an expansion at some point or additional something like that or if you just need to make your own until then i do highly suggest checking out the game especially if you're a big fan of pictionary and uh, those drawing specific types of games where you have to do the guessing it's a great family game it's a, it's a great uh, filler game and it's a great party game. Overall, Panther the Game, excellent! Check it out.